Hi, I'm Denise from Playful Potter in Sparks, Nevada, and today I'm going to show you how to create a layered poinsettia dish. This layered poinsettia dish does use several patterns. It is slightly more advanced, so you probably want some cutting experience. The shapes aren't difficult to cut out. They are organic, so you know, there is flexibility, but I do find that customers who have uh, never cut glass before do struggle with this project. So you start off with a pattern. This is the pattern uh, for the poinsettia. It looks really complicated, but once we start laying it out, it makes a lot of sense. There will be copies of this uh, made available. We've made different um, outlines of the shapes depending on where they're located. The dots are for the leaves. The dash lines are for our bottom layer of petals, and the solid lines are for the top layer of petals. Before you can start with your stencil, or with your pattern underneath of your glass, you are going to cut all of your pieces. I like to use uh, a, pa a pattern, have the stencil essentially ready for your customers. What they can do is just lay this on their table, trace over their shapes if they want it exact, or they can just use this as a guide and kind of give themselves just a basic count of how many petals they need and what size. I've already cut my shapes, but I am going to demonstrate for you. I like to use a lot of scrap glass. This poinsettia plate looks wonderful with a variety of different types of glass or colors of glass. You can use opal glass, you can use transparent glass. It really just depends on what your customer's looking for. I like to use a lot of scrap glass, so I drew a sample of the, one of the petals on this layer of glass. So when you're cutting, I'm right-handed, so I like to push away from me. I'm gonna start at one end, a nice, slow, even pressure all the way to the end of my score. Because this piece of glass already had this nice organic curve to it, I just made my petal fit into that little shape there. another petal shape. Again, the shape of the petals doesn't matter quite as much. You do want your bottom layer of petals to be a little bit more narrow than your top petals. They are going to overlap. I like to do this project with transparent glass because you do get the depth when you add those layers. Before we can start layering our petals, though, we do need to make our leaves. They're like a traditional holly leaf more than a poinsettia leaf. Poinsettia leaves are round, so you can do either one just depending on what you prefer. I'll demonstrate a round leaf since in one of the other projects we've already shown you how to do a holly leaf. So I'm just going to draw a little sketch on here just to aid me with what I'm going to cut. Again, nice slow even pressure one into the other. When you're cutting pieces that are this small, it is a great way to use your scrap glass, so make sure you're not throwing that glass away. Use my running pliers. If you have small pieces that don't break off, if they're a little narrow, you can use your grosers to pull them off. It's not really necessary though when you're doing leaves. Again, they are an organic shape, so if there's a little bit of a difference, it's totally fine. I try to tell my customers not to stress about the little things. They come in here to relax and enjoy. The last thing I want them to do is stressing out if their pattern doesn't match exactly with mine. All right, so I'm gonna pull this up here so you can see it really well. So I'm working with an eight inch piece of clear glass. I like to work on this piece uh, with a clear base, even if you're working with layers of transparent glass, it's easier to see your pattern underneath if you're working on a clear base. If you're a more experienced fuser and you don't mind layering, then go ahead and work on an opaque back, but it is a little bit more difficult for customers. All right, so we're going to use a small amount of glue to attach all of our pieces. And we are going to start with some yellow pebbles to make the center of our poinsettia. Just a small amount of glue. 
again, with your customers, have them lay out their entire design first. It helps them to visualize that they're not committed to anything until they start gluing. That way, if they see that something's not working, something's not fitting, they can cut a new piece before they've started gluing. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to start by gluing the leaves. I'm going to line my leaves up with my pattern, make sure that they're kind of in the right spot. Again, I'm following the dotted lines on the pattern. Oops, that's not right. Again, one small dot of glue on each end of your piece. You don't want to trap too much glue in the center of your piece. It can lead to problems when you full fuse. There we go. I'm trying to fill my pattern as best I can. Again, customers don't have to be as worrisome about that. All right, so what we're going to do next is we are going to lay down our base petals, which is this row here on the bottom. Bottom petals are on the bottom. These two pieces I actually um, just cut out right next to each other, so they actually fit together. So we're going to put those and leave those together in the pattern. I don't want this piece to shift as I'm trying to put it into the kiln. This is really hard to put back together um, if it starts to slide. So you want to make sure that your customer is using enough glue to hold it together and make it easy for you and your staff, but not so much that it's going to result in issues once the piece goes into the kiln. So there is our simple poinsettia pattern. If you want to spruce it up a notch, which I'm going to do here to show you on my sample, I'm actually going to use some Irid Frit. This is a black Irid Frit, and it's the medium texture. You can either use a large spoon to apply it, which is fine for large areas. You can use this to just kind of sprinkle the frit around the edges. If you're looking for something that's going to give you more control, we use straws in our studio. They're cut at an angle. They make a perfect little scoop. So if you're looking at filling in smaller areas, this is a great way to do it. All right, since I'm doing some big areas, I'm going to go back to my spoon and just sprinkle some black irid frit. This has got a wonderful shine to it. Once it's been fired, it's really beautiful. When you're working with frit, especially with the medium or a fine frit, I have my customers and I myself, um, I apply all of the larger pieces that need to be glued first, and then I just sprinkle my frit on. I don't set it with glue. Once we have all of the frit on, we're going to set it with hairspray. I'm not too worried if I get frit underneath or on my petals. I think it just kind of gives the piece a little bit more of an organic feel. If you're really particular, you can use a paintbrush to pull that extra frit off your petals once you've done, you've finished sprinkling it all over the top. Kind of fill in here a little bit so we're even all the way around. Again, this is just going to add a little bit more of a pop to those colors in the center. You can do it with different colors. Encourage your customers to experiment and have fun. You can mix colors and do different shades of frit if you want to. All right, I think I'm almost done here. All right, we're looking pretty good. Okay, so to set this, don't worry about using expensive hairspray. Cheap hairspray from the dollar store works great. Um, this is white rain. Um, unscented I do find is important. You are gonna be using quite a bit of it near your customers. So you want to make sure that they're comfortable. Hairsprays that have a lot of scent do tend to linger. So when I'm hairspraying, don't spray really close. The force of the aerosol will move all of your frit. So you want to start farther away and just kind of spritz across the top to start setting things. Then just move a little bit closer. Give it a nice coat. 
Now your piece is all ready to dry. Once it's dry, you just pick it up and put it in the kiln. Again, you can fire this piece to a full fuse, a contour fuse, or a tack fuse, depending on what you're looking for. This is a really fun project, especially for customers who've done a little bit of glass cutting before. Turns out to a beautiful, beautiful dish.